will be in English, so I'll start also in English. Um, I have an honor to introduce to you Professor Renato Rizzi. Uh, he is Professor of Architecture of Theory and Design at University Iwab in Venice. He has worked with Peter Eisenman for 10 years in New York before returning to teach and practice in Italy. If something incorrect, please. Uh, architect and theoretician, has, his notable projects include the sports area in Trento, the Futuristic Museum and the Peros House in Rovereto, and recently he completed the famous Elizabethan Theatre in Gdansk, Poland. Uh, in 2008, he received the Gold Medal for Italian Architecture for the past renovation. He also wrote books, and his recent book is uh, in Daimon di Architettura, in three volumes, uh, which was published recently. Uh, three volumes are Theory, Manuale, and Parva Mundi. Corretto. Corretto. So, I'm very proud to introduce to you, Signor Renato Rizzi. Thank you to be here. And it's the first time that I'm speaking about architecture in, uh, in Moscow, in Russia. But uh, for me, it's very important this, uh, this occasion to, to speak about architecture because my most important uh, teacher comes from Russia. Is Josef Brodsky. He's not an architect. He's uh, Osip Mandelstam is uh, Marina Kvetavia, is correct? Kvetavia. Yeah. I'm sorry. And Akhmatova? Yeah. Okay. So, but I read a lot, especially Josef Broski. And uh, now, I mean, uh, he's uh, n in my city, he's sleeping in my city, in Venice. Cimitero di San Michele. So, and uh, I really liked uh, to have this opportunity because Something that I'm going to, to share with you comes from, uh, from his uh, thought and from his life. So, and one thing that uh, I really learned, and is very simple, and he wrote many, many times in his books, is first aesthetic, then ethic. I repeat, forced aesthetic, then ethic. Today, in our time, we say forced ethic, then maybe in the future, aesthetic. No, no. Forced aesthetic, then ethic. This is one. But the second, I learned a lot from him that we have only one chance today to think in a, I don't want to say in the best way, but in the best way that you think to think. So is to refer very well to the words that we use. Because today the words, they lost their meaning and their sense. So if we lose the capability to use the perfect language, how is possible to comprehend what you are thinking or you are desiring to, to do? So, for this reason, I would like to introduce just uh, four, four words. The first one is very banal, is architecture. I mean, we are architects, we are in the school of architecture, but I am not so sure that we share exactly, not, not, I don't want to say exactly, but the deepness of this world. And I think that if we don't know more or less the variety and the complexity of the meaning of this world, how we can argue and we can discuss about architecture? This is one. The second is uh, immediately near, is uh, about the contemporary culture. What does it mean contemporary culture today? So if we are not able 
to have a critique or a knowledge to understand the paradigm of a contemporary culture. It means the culture that we grow up. We have been educated inside this paradigm. How is possible to understand if this culture is positive or negative for the world of architecture? And then the third one is about us. We have uh, some knowledge about what we are, somehow. So, and then comes from architecture, contemporary culture, us, but also the last, uh, the last word, it will be project. What does it mean, project, also? So, I start quickly. Because I don't have too much time to, to discuss about this question, I have to be very synthetic and very simple, and then uh, you have to, sorry if I have to be so, so speedy, but uh, I mean, we could, uh, we could talk a lot about this, but. <clears throat> so, I would like just to write, because you, you can memorize much better what I am writing. So, architecture. So, uh, this mm, word has uh, two roots. Very simple. This one and this. So, each of us knows uh, the differences between archi, arche. This is arche. And techne. So, but um, <clears throat> techne is technique. Okay, forget it. But arche, it's easy to say arche, it will be the principles. And then you said, which are the principles? Easy to, to answer is good, nice, and uh, how do you say? Bello, il buono, il vero, the truth, the good, and the beauty. But these are, they are too general. The big difference is, is that arche and techne are completely different structure. Because arche is the knowledge that is for us undominable, is undominable. But techne is the knowledge that is dominable. We use techne to produce whatever we want, but we don't know what does it mean, RK? Because the RK belongs to the undominable knowledge. So, but RK is before it forced of techne, because architecture. So, before are the domain of undominable knowledge, and then there is the, um, uh, how do you say, the area of dominable knowledge. So, hi, here I, I'm writing in the indomitable. So, now I'm going straight to the second word, contemporary culture. <laughs> I mean, I would like to ask you, somebody are able to tell me which is the paradigm of contemporary culture? I mean, here in all, all over Europe, United States, everywhere. Because today, contemporary culture domains the entire planet. So, contemporary culture. So, contemporary culture is based... I mean, I, I don't want to explain everything, but it's based only in this, in this part. Only in techne and science. Because we are in technical and scientific world. But the culture of today doesn't allow to go into the notion of indominability of our knowledge. So this is a big question. 
But I want, in this case, to use to use one image. Oh, it's not so easy to cancel here. So I use this uh, diagram. So here is Arke. Here is Tecne. Here is the knowledge of undominable. Here is the knowledge of dominability. But we are here. So it means that we are here and we are the neck of the uh, hourglass. This is like a hourglass, okay? You can switch on. And it means that this volume of arche, of indominability, goes into the volume of techne and vice versa, vice versa, vice versa. Okay, it's clear. But, but, we are here. We are really the neck, this one. So we are really a matrix between this and this. So contemporary culture is based in techne and only in this part today, only here. So now I'm going back to the third world is uh, us, we, which is the subject. Are we the architects or the subject is architecture? Is another bigger question, but I put here us like this. And then I draw again the same. Uh, so we are always here. But today, because we are in contemporary culture based on technique and science, our individuality is completely in this ambit. And this ambit is the ambit of self-reference. So the arbitrariness. But if we take care about our care, and if we are able to think that we are going into the indominable uh, knowledge, we should become singularity. Because individuality is a neutral word. I mean, each of us is an uh, individual. But the problem is, we are individual, but we are sing belongs to a specific singularity. But why? But because each of us are different. Hey, look, you are completely different to each other. So it means that the techne, techne produce rules, produce proced, pro, pro, procedure, pro, procedure uh, how do you say, procedure, ah, forget, rules, law and uh, formula, whatever you want. Yes, but techne deny, deny the existence of singularity. Because the techne is the way to homogenize the world. Because we apply rules. We apply law that comes from techne. But the shape because we produce shape, belongs only to us. Goes through our body, goes through our mind, 
and goes through our soul. Doesn't go through rules. Because the rules are just a frozen number. Stop. So, but today we are especially inside the, the world of techne and we are self-reference. Our world is arbitrary. But architecture, we cannot forget architecture because if we are in the university where architecture it calls architecture, we need to think about that structure. Otherwise, we should call the university just university of tector, tecture, or technique. So it's different. If, I, if I, it's like this, I mean, I could not say anything about what I'm saying. So, and now, now, I will So now I'm speaking about project, the last one. So also, the Howard glass, and here we are. So if we remember the, the scheme that we just, uh, just we have done uh, before, here is Tecne. And here is our care. Okay? So, the culture, the contemporary culture, works only in this part. So, the project, it means that this part of the project belongs to the phenomenal. So, it means what we can see with our eyes. And here, to reach and to understand the, real, the visible reality, just we need uh, analysis or logic. But what's happened here? Arche. I mean, arche is before techne. Arche is the domain of undominable. So here, so the project has this kind of direction. One is here, the other one is here. But here, to go into the domain of arche, we need completely different is phenomenon, and here is noumenon. Noumenon. So noumenon, it means the idea. The, the images, but to reach this undominable world, we need the contemplation. And the only device that we have to translate or to catch just a, a little part of this indominable world is representation. But here, just we have presentation. So, <clears throat> just I need it now, just to go back for one second to the notion of a contemporary culture. Because the contemporary culture, we said, that is based only on the domain of uh, technique. Yes, but contemporary culture doesn't born, uh, I don't know, five centuries ago and then uh, suddenly with uh, this idea. No, contemporary culture comes from very old knowledge and comes from philosophy. But before philosophy, the question mm -hmm. is, where, from where comes our knowledge? Our knowledge. 
from where? If we, were, if we go back one million years ago, what, what, what's happened? How we can learn something? We can learn something only because Brodsky said, first aesthetic, then ethic. Now we can say, first is to appear, and then the meaning. Forced to appear, but to appear, it means is the aesthetic because it's what what we can see outside us. We start to interpret the world outside us. But to appear, appear in two ways too. What is visible and what is invisible. But the invisible is much bigger than the visible whatever you want, because now you can think what, I mean, differently. I mean, you can listen what I'm talking about, but you can dream uh, very nice uh, shore, water, whatever you want. So our, <clears throat> our invisible are much more stronger than the visible. So here is the the ambit of visible. So visible and also touchable. Like this, okay? But here is the invisible. But there is one, there is one question that now is fundamental. And then in two minutes I stop. When, because our knowledge comes from to appear, from aesthetic, so it means that aesthetic has an incredible law. First of all, aesthetic is not, we cannot overcome the level of aesthetic. Not at all. Even though it's visible or invisible. Because we cannot, we are in this world. We are our body, and we are, uh, with, with this body, we can think both what is visible and invisible. So, without our body, we cannot see anything. So, it means that we cannot split apart visibility and invisibility. But what is aesthetic has incredible rule, because aesthetic, it means that. Everything appears, and then if everything appears, everything is really connected, is full of relation, relationship, is completely changed. Change, uh, catenato, in catenato, like a chain. chain changed. Changed. Okay? So it means that this floor looks this uh, ceiling, the ceiling looks the column, the column, the window, the window, the, the trees outside, the roof, the, everything, and then you can go to the sky, whatever you want. Everything in the pier is completely linked. Completely. What is visible and what is invisible. Maybe we see our hathom inside our blood now? No. We see our blood goes up and down? No. Yes, but they are going. And the structure of our blood is the same that the molecular, molecular in, uh, in all planets in the world, in, in the universe. So it means that the aesthetic is the field of connection. Yes, but be careful. Tecne. Tecne is the word where everything is disconnected. Everything is split apart. So the techne says that we are the demiurgos, the king of the world. We can do whatever we want. We are, how do you say, the, the owner of the world. Yes, but if we go here, arche, suddenly this idea disappears. Completely. Because it's architecture that calls us 
to be on his level. And for this reason, we need to develop and to grow up in education to reach that level that demands architecture. Because if architecture calls us, it means that for us it's a gift. And we have incredible gift to work and to go towards architecture. So it means that if we move from self-reference or singularity is a completely different way. Completely different. Because don't forget this point. Because in these five uh, words that I used, uh, I used uh, one question, the unity of the experience. Our experience cannot be split apart. To make a project, I mean, uh, on each level of the project, we need to do a unity experience for the project. And we cannot avoid our presence, presence plus absence, in the project. So today, the techne, instead of the techne, give us just a set of rules, and we can apply the rules, and more or less we do what we are doing. So, but just to go out and see what's happening in all over the city in the world. So we homogenized in less than 50 years almost the entire world. The periphery are the periphery. And we are not able to to produce something different. And, but the question is, we are, in, in your age, but also my age, in the university. But the university is the only place where the, the first law is the freedom, not by ourselves, but is the freedom of the knowledge of architecture. And we need to grow up to reach that law, because that law is our freedom. Without this link, without to have the, con the consciousness about indomitable and dominable, visible and invisible, and singularity against self-reference, it's difficult to produce any kind of architecture. This talk, this question, are not uh, very well understood for one reason. Because if we are consciousness about this scheme, it means that each of us, even though you are a student or uh, I am a teacher, it doesn't matter, we are full, full of responsibility. And today, if we are, because we are inside the technical and science domain, the responsibilities belongs to the rules and the law of techne. So we can do very awful building, very awful projects, but we are always safe because we apply the rules of techne, of economy, of everything. But the problem is that the responsibility doesn't belong to techne because techne is a neutral in uh, knowledge somehow. But we need to keep again the responsibilities about ourselves. More or less, I stop. And uh, so now, uh, if if you feel, I can show some some images about uh, the, the relation between what I said and uh, and what I'm doing. Okay. So the. the one of the first projects that we have done is the, the study of the pavement of Basilica di San Marco in, uh, in Venice. Because the, this is a matrix, it's made in rubber. And, uh, <clears throat> and it's full of uh, counter line, and each counter line is uh, one millimeter. And, uh, but the problem, the problem was uh, here. 
because this piece is a very special uh, floor of basilica. So the basilica has five domes, and uh, the most important dome, the dome of Ascension, Ascension is here. And just under the, this dome, there is this piece, this uh, square floor that it calls Mare, the sea. Yes, but I mean, uh, Venice is built on the water. So the problem is, was uh, why they call this the, the sea and under there is really the water. So this came the idea to make the how do you say, Sindone, Scroud, no, Schroud, the Schroud, do you understand the, the meaning? No? Oh, Sindone is the, the seat, the, the, the seat linen, where, where Jesus Christ was an, an envelope. How do you say? Okay, but this is exactly the images that reflect the wave of the water that is under the church. So, the <clears throat> then we, uh, the, the second work on, on Venice was uh, to analyze which are the eyes that uh, they are looking that kind of uh, shroud. And, and where the dome of, uh, of the churches. So just I show you two churches, almost three. This is the Church uh, della Salute. And also this uh, is one way to proceed slowly into the reinforcing the theory of, uh, in, in architecture. And, uh, <clears throat> and then this is another, another project made by in, in Naples, and Naples has a, a city that has a two important levels. One is the level of uh, the urban level, is this one, this, but underneath is a full of uh, caves, is full of uh, incredible voids, and uh, and then I decided to put this uh, house for music. This is the the periphery of uh, Naples, and this is the, the project. This is just one high that goes uh, deep into the, the underground uh, level. So I go quick, quickly, always uh, plaster model, but the plaster model in, in a while you will see uh, how much time uh, required to, to build it. This is an, uh, a place near, uh, near Vicenza, it's a Baldagno. Okay. The same project. So here is Venice. And... Uh, oh, okay. Okay. So... Venice is here. This is the Canale della Giudecca. And, and the problem was uh, now in Venice there is a gr uh, big uh, debate to, to develop the underground uh, train to connect very fast uh, the city with the terra ferma. So the problem is not the underground because the, uh, from technical point of view it's possible to, to do without to damage uh, the lagoon. But the real question is how, how is possible to come up? How, how is possible to, to design the station when you come, come up from the, this uh, strange subway? So, and, uh, and one position very subtle, very delicate, is here in front of Piazza San Marco. And then... So, here is Piazza San Marco, the church, uh, Salutes Church, that we saw the dome before, San Giorgio, and this is the station. So the station is a reverberation, more or less, of Piazza San Marco, but it's completely 
sunk into the water. So just uh, this border is uh, one meter and 50 centimeters above the, the sea level, the, the water level. So th when the train comes here, so you go out exactly in a square with the, with the sky. I mean, you, you, you don't go out in, in a black uh, uh, tunnel. No, you just see the sky. And then the system to, go, to come up is very slow, and you see the, 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 the face of Venice in a very different uh, manner. So, okay, just one second. This project, it calls, uh, how do you say, salire, salire a Venezia, to go up to Venice. But go up to Venice because the level we need to reach. Hmm. We need, oh, come sorry. We need to reach the level that, Excuse me. Okay. So, let's go. Now, some uh, some slides about uh, Cortina Cortina d'Ampezzo in uh, in Italy. Uh, the job was uh, how how to develop the notion of landscape in this touristic. Uh, Alp uh, Center, and uh, we started to to remade the model with the, for the mountains that is around uh, 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 around Cortina. This is the dr the first drawings made by hand, of, of course. Then, okay, so, so each level each level is. Uh, the zero three millimeters is, a, is made by cardboard, and in this case we do the positive in cardboard, and then we use the rubber to make the, the negative, the matrix, and then we use the plaster to, to do it. So just one example how we have to, to draw each level, and there are thousands and thousands and thousands of levels. Okay? So this is the, the pieces of a cardboard. So, and here you can see the progression and the process of growing of, uh, of the modeling cardboard. Okay. So, almost done. And here is the, the final. So, here is the, the rubber, the, the negative. And unfortunately, to, to make it this negative costs a lot of money because the the matter is very expensive and is very much more expensive than the cardboard. So, and here is the, the positive in, uh, in plaster. So, but also, one question could be this, but why you are losing time to, to make this? Just you can use uh, some photographs. <laughs> yes, but uh, the problem is only in this way we spend the real time to understand the structure of that uh, place, because this is not the replication of a photograph. Because in this model there are two laws. The first rule is in plan. Everything has precise, perfectly precise. But and now we go. Just we did the more th four different models in different scale. But then, okay. So you can see the, this view only because you need to change the scale of the hike. If you keep the same scale in, uh, in horizontal plane, you cannot read this. So it means that every model is a special uh, way of thinking and seeing that place. But this question, is a, it is going towards another big problem. Because today, we think that the space is a neutral. The space has to be continuous, isometric, and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and endless. But places are 
irrepeatable. And you cannot uh, duplicate the places. So the, the first problem is, I think for myself, is how we can deal with the structure of the places. For this reason, we do this kind of work. So, so another, this was a competition to, in, the, in the middle of uh, Appennini in, uh, in Italy. So, I'm sorry, like this. And this, uh, this mountain is very famous because uh, it's inside uh, La Divina Commedia di Dante, in the inferno, in the hell. Okay, let's go. Here we are again, another place in Appennini, near L'Aquila, when it has been the earthquake, and we did a, a, a design for, for, that, uh, for that event. So, but to make this model, uh, you spend a lot, a lot of time. So this is a section of uh, the same model on level plus 1,000. So this is Vorso. This is Vorso, and we redo, redid the image take during the Second World War after the, this, uh, the bombing the, the city. Because we were doing a competition for the Palace of Justice, and, no, for Science and Culture. And then uh, here you see what we have done. Because uh, I, I don't know in English how do you say Zatera. Zatera is a, it's like a boat, a flat boat. But this a flat boat, start, uh, from here you can see Moscow, but from here you can see Brussels. So and the Zatera goes like this now, because he, he, here you see this movement. Okay. Other work for the huge landscape, here is Venice. This is the lagoon, and this is the, the border of Alps. So, and here they, went, they wanted to build a new road, and we had the job to, to analyze the value of the landscape. So, but just uh, here is just important to see the, the images. So this is the same model, but here, it's quite interesting, this figure that comes up in this way. So this is uh, the, the flatness of uh, Pianura Veneta, of the land of Veneto. But from this side to here, all the country are under the level of water. So this is the channel. It's a reach of channel to control the water to go in, into the sea. So it means that here the landscape is positive and from this line to down is negative. Okay, this is another model made for, to design a mask in Venice. So here is Greece. You can see everything. So let's go. Another model about the lagoon, still Venice, because we did different uh, projects about uh, this station that comes from, from the water. So this is the Nile for the competition we have done for the museum in, uh, in Egypt. So, So the, there are the, the, the facade of uh, the museum, but uh, I cannot explain very well because otherwise we lose too much time. Just to see like this. So and, and this is a, a, still a, a competition in Ferrara. 
is a city near uh, Po River, and this is the different phase of uh, developing of, uh, of the urban structure. And this is the one of the branch of uh, Po. And the competition was to transform the, um, the gel in the prison in, uh, in Ferrara with uh, a new, in, in a new museum for the Hebrew heritage. So this is the place. This one is over here, here, and here. So, but uh, what is very important is that I show you. Oh, this is the different system of uh, water around uh, the city. Very complex. So, and here you can see. Okay. This is uh, the ghetto where the Hebrew were living in the 16th and 17th century inside uh, the city. But the Hebrew, the Hebrew were very important to give the capability to build this part of the wall around the city. So, but they were <laughs> close inside this small area. And now, another uh, image of uh, the wall of uh, Ferrara. So this is the, just to show that the, the surfaces of uh, the city is not flat, but uh, is in, that there is a very important slope. So here again, the, the relationship between ghetto and the our site, and again. So, and here you see now the solution of uh, the museum, because the, the prison were here, is that the prison become the lock to open or to close the whole walk of this border. So it means that if you, you can walk around the border, around the world of uh, Ferrara, but you have to go through the museum. So the museum gives you the capability to read also the history of the city and the, the transformation between prison, that prison it means to isolate something, to the museum that it means to connect something, in, in this case becomes really the lock of, uh, of the wall. So you can see a little better now. And uh, it's full of channel that connects uh, the museum also with uh, the Po River. Let's go quickly. So, so here, when you walk here, you can walk. So you have to stop here, go into here, goes here, go out, and keep going. So go quickly. So the, the wall of the prison doesn't, doesn't be any more to, to split out or to isolate or to close or something, but to open. So the, the system becomes like a golf, or a golf. <coughs> another another project made in uh, for, for Istanbul project project was how we can analyze this city because uh, this is the, the the city links has an incredible link with the, with Venice uh, Istanbul and again one project made for Parma here but this is the Appennini the chain of Appennini and this is the river po the river the Po river Okay, 
So the, the system of rivers uh, that goes into the main main river pool. So one more landscape uh, image about uh, South Africa. This is uh, Port Elizabeth. And we did uh, this in the university that uh, is in the title, the, the, the name is dedicated the university to Nelson Mandela. So this is the negative. Yeah, I could uh, I could speak m much more about what we have done, but uh, so and this is the last uh, work that we are doing is about Lampedusa, the island uh, in the Mediterranean, made famous for migrants, and uh, and we are developing this question about migrants, but so this is another scale. The island is. Of, of course, this. But the island of Lampedusa belongs uh, geologically to Africa and not to Europe. And then another scale. So this is uh, the head of uh, the island, like this. And this is the, the same image with the, the project. So the project is here. Is this high? So now, but uh, we built. We are designing a cathedral for for migrants, and uh, we we dig the the rocks. It's a high, one hundred meters, and uh, and we create uh, a gallery from uh, south to north of the island where the boats can come in and then this is a, a section of the, the island this is the level zero so this is the level of water and this is the the long tunnel and the, the path that you can come up to the island but here is the cathedral Oh, and, and this is the last, uh, hey, okay, it doesn't matter. This is uh, Manhattan, New York, and we did another project for uh, how to think the, the notion of community, and uh, so we, we produced another hole in, uh, in Manhattan. It was another cathedral sunk into the, the water. So here is one image that shows some relationship between the different projects that we have done, Naples, Parma, Gdansk, and Florence. And now I don't think that I have time to explain this, but the, the dome of Santa Maria del Fiore became the new classroom, the new class for teaching in the future. But uh, I don't think that now we can stop with this. Thank you. a really pity that I cannot speak my <coughs> my own language because I can use very different words but now I hate to speak in English but so anyway but the problem is when when I was a student and I decided to go to the university I hope 
to go in a place full of uh, how do you say how do you say stupore Asto- to, to be astonished the, the, to be shocked because right. you see always beautiful things right and then instead of to, to receive this kind of experience the university was very boring and I said, oh my god why I mean uh, why do I need to, to waste my time in this case so this is the first experience but then I realized that to grow up you need to make also this experience so then I decided to go to the United States in the Peter Eisenman office. I went there because when I saw his projects, I didn't understand anything. And he said, but something were in, intriguing me. I said, why, why he's doing this? Where this language comes from? So then I went and I work. Yes, but I understood after 10 years, no, after six months, but 10 years, that he his Hebrew architect. So, Hebrew, I, I am Christian and Greek architect because my education comes from Christian and Greek uh, culture. He comes from Hebrew culture, okay? He doesn't care about synagogue or, it doesn't matter. But his mind is roots in his heritage. So, I went to study the Hebrew culture. And you discover something very interesting. Because Peter Eisenman, he went back to the origin of his heritage symbols that lie in Kabbalah first. Then these symbols are chronological. There are three important symbols. And he applied at the beginning of his language, these three symbols that produce three different languages. But the problem was another. He never wrote that where he came, where he came this, the springs of his language. Why? <laughs> because this is, an, is a characteristic of Peter. He used the contemporary culture to deny or to oblige or to hidden the origin of his thought because he wanted just to be modern architect, not Hebrew modern architect. So, but when, when I was working with him, I learned that if you don't open your knowledge until the beginning of your heritage. You cannot do anything in architecture. So, I mean, I wrote uh, two books on him, on his language, and he hates this, <laughs> but he never wrote any word. But in the same times, then I came back to Italy. I wanted to teach in, in Italy. And I went back to develop my, my own theory that comes from the myth of Greek, the, the Christian tradition, and blah, blah, blah. But now, for example, just I understand one, one thing. I would like to say that I am really theology in architecture. It's not right to say like it is, but... Uh, but each of you could say, oh, come on, theology. Hey, it's, uh, it's already passed over. Yes, but if we go to the origin of the word, theology, theos, it means God. But at the beginning, theos, it means to whom it looks very well to the entire world, and in the same time is able to see the all particularity of that world. So it's the special way how to see what we do. Well, thank you very much. Uh, my, my question is about presentation and, and the presentation. You are, you are showing only models uh, today, at least. 
and most of the models have a large scale. They are one to 10,000 maybe or even bigger. So the, the bird eye view, view of the god looking onto the earth. <laughs> well, are you using drawings or pictures while in your work? Uh, or, or, or not, or, or it's for you just the, the instrument, technical instrument to... Uh, <laughs> so, we, we do this, we apply this method only for one reason. Even though we do uh, any project, we start making, producing models in a big, big scale until a small, a small scale. Why? Because in this way, we are able, working in different scale for the same project, to develop like a, a sort of a vocabulary of the project. But we do the models because we read, we need to read just the image of that model. But that image, we produce that image. We didn't take that image from a book. We built this. So you need to spend a lot of time to do this. And every time that image is your image that belongs to that place because we said in the horizontal plane, everything has to be perfectly precise. But in the vertical dimension, you need to, to move the hike because otherwise you are not able to keep the quality of that place. Because when... I mean, our, our dimension is always the same. But when we do, and when we see a scale one to one million, or one to one ten thousand, or one to five thousand, our scale is the same, but the scale of the, the model is changing. So it means that our look lose the capability to, um, to keep the quality of the place. And you, we need to, to transfer this into the model because the model becomes the three-dimensional, three how do you say, vocabulary for the project. And then when you have one, two, three, four, 10, 15 models, for each model you have one image and, and more or less we summarize this and then, and then the project doesn't come. Because you need just to make a jump, and maybe you fall down, or maybe sometimes you are able to reach uh, the other shoulder of, uh, of the void. So, but uh, it's one way to, to keep going, in the, we think, in the best way for following the process of uh, architecture. Other questions? So uh, the biggest uh, difference is, is quite, quite simple. So um, why, for example, Eisenman doesn't like, he didn't like 
that I wrote the book about uh, his origin in symbols. Because he believed that the symbol are only the symbols from an anthropomorphic, an anthropocentric, or the symbol of a figurative belongs to the Christian and Greek tradition. Okay? So the Christianity draw the face of God and, and the Christ. And, okay? But in the Hebrew culture, every symbol are abstraction. But are abstraction. But our symbol is the same. doesn't change anything. So the, the, one of the first important symbols are the sephiro. Sephiro are the ten different layers that connect uh, Ensof with Malkut, the divine with uh, our presence. Yes, but are simple plane, and each plane reflect each other. Okay? This is symbol sometimes it has been described like um, a cut in the sky, like a knife, like this. Yes, but it's a symbol. Without that symbol, Peter was not able to design anything. Anything. So the problem is, symbol are symbol. What is symbol for me? Symbol is not something that is figurative, like the vase or I don't know. The symbol is incredible and indestructible forces that is inside you and moves you in that way without your will. <laughs> I mean, you do only what you feel to do because already inside you, you have this kind of energy. And I mean... I worked 10 years with Peter, but I mean, I never thought it to become, uh, to use his language. But I admire him. For, for me, Peter is a, is a genius. He's not a, a monkey. He's a really a genius. But I mean, I had to go back to my crazy heritage and, and work with myth and work with the, the old iconography of uh, uh, century and century and to rethink and to look at uh, the spaces. For example, Peter ne never did uh, models about uh, place. But for Hebrew culture, doesn't exist the notion of place, but exists the notion of space or the event. For them, the real problem was not to build city, but to build the city in their mind. So to build the book. That is their, how do you say, residence, really. Yes, but I mean, the language is completely different, and the attitude is completely different. I mean, I, I didn't, um, I, I cannot say that I like his language, but I can understand that his language is a real strong language. That's the question. And the problem is that today, may, all the critics, they never went deeply into the, how do you say, in the darkness of death symbols. Because it's too dangerous. It's too easy to, to float uh, like in the surfaces and to say, okay, it's moving. So why, t tell me, Peter wrote in his most important article, the end of the classical, that the architecture has to be arbitrariness, arbitrariness, has to be without without origin and without end. Is arbitrariness his, his architecture? Not at all. Is without origin? Not at all. Without end? Not at all. But he wrote, when he published the, his first book about uh, houses, or house 10, there is a, I don't know, maybe 10 or 100 pages for his project, and then 100 pages written by him. Why? Because he wanted to put, to hidden the origin of his language. And every, every sentence is, you need to follow this corner, this angle, I titled like this, I move like this. So there were no possibilities to misunderstood what he wanted to do. But he was to deny, to, how do you say, nascondere, to... To hidden 
he's a really he's a real origin. E. So in our time is the time for the confusion. Because there is not any capability to understand the fundamentals. So Peter for me, Peter Eisenman is the most important modern architects in Hebrew heritage. So it, but, but it means that each of us can develop its own language. <laughs> there is no that only Peter Eisman, he did this. And then Daniel Libeskin, more or less the same. And then uh, Frank Gehry. Frank Gehry doesn't exist without Peter Eisenman. But Frank Gehry was much more, uh, how do you say, fresh than Peter sometimes. Because he had much more success, Frank Gehry. Also, Frank Gehry is a Hebrew. But he used the theory of Peter. So, for example, I want to ask you, who knows who are able to interpret the Guggenheim, the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao? Where comes the Guggenheim image from Bilbao? So only because you are a Hebrew, you are able to do this. So the origin is the Guggenheim Museum made by Frank Lloyd Wright. Okay? And this is, um, how do you say, a spiral? But no, it's not a spiral. Molla. How do you say Molla? It's a bling, okay? It's a spring? Oh, spring. Spring, okay? It's a spring. But the spiral of Frank Lloyd Wright is a spring with a wire fixed, okay? It's like this. And Frank Gehry, Hebrew, what is it? He unscrew the screw and bloop, and then will bow. Hey. <laughs> no, <laughs> you are smiling, but this is the, the, the real truth. I mean, and then everybody, whoa. Yeah, yeah. If you go and read Blueprint, it's a magazine published in New York in 1984. There is a, in, maybe the most sincere interview that he did for a magazine, okay? The title, the title was Miss Reading Eisenman, Miss Reading. And then he said the two things very important. One, he said, my goal, my goal is not arbitrary. My goal is to move the Christian and Greek axis in architecture from Hebrew architecture. Eh? Interesting. One. Second, he said, if you don't have a, any notion of Theology, in a very traditional way, theology, you cannot do anything. Why? Because Walter Benjamin wrote that theology is underground the notion of creation. And every piece of art is based on the notion of creation, like did Peter Eisenman. So, but Peter Eisenman wrote... Uh, but Peter Eisenman said, arbitrariness, no origin, no end. Hey. <laughs> about uh, religion quality, or yeah. phys uh, physical uh, experience of space yeah. in your architecture. Yeah. Because I, um, I, uh, I see a project in theater and dance. It's very really like uh, in the early Christian an autodarky theater. Autodarky. Early Christian. No. Because I can think, uh, I can see it on the image, I would ask you about this religion quality of, of physical aspect. Okay. Uh, again, the, the same question religion. Yes, I am a religion architect. Point. Stop. Yeah, but what does it mean, religion? For me, a religion doesn't matter about a tradition. I mean, uh, what do we know about religion to core? But religion, it means relink. So it means to create connection between between everybody. So, 
we said that aesthetic is the place where it's full of relationship, connection. So, another word to say aesthetic, we could say religion. So, yes, but I mean, the, the, the meaning of the word are going back to their origin and stay there. That's the question. And we, we need to forget how the, how do you say, the modification of the meaning uh, was during the last, uh, I don't know, 2,000 years. But I could say, and I could write, that I am really religious architect, only for this question, not for the, in the traditional manner. But our architects, uh, I'm sorry, architecture, when we do something, we put always our piece in the public domain, yes or not? So, are we able to produce something that is completely, completely invisible? Even when you imagine something, already that image is in connection with everything, even though it's invisible. It's invisible for only for our eyes. Yes, but do you know how many images there are in a, in a piece of stone? And, and here, in this case, could be very interesting to read Hossip Mandelstam that he dedicated uh, 11 conversations on the divine comedy of Dante. Could be very, very strong reading, very strong for, for architects. Thank you. No, Thank thanks. You. Thank you so much. Thank you.